name is Bay, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. As you can see, the art on the screen is not mine. It is the line art uh, my friend Kat at Catatomic Art drew, and we had decided that we were going to do a line art swap. So I drew her character, and she drew mine, and we're going to color it in. And it's, it's interesting for me because Kat and I color in such a vastly different way. She does like this beautiful painted art style on a digital medium and I lean more towards probably cell shading. So it's interesting to see how the coloring looks on the different characters and how different we would choose to color each other's pictures. So it's a lot of fun. So this character here is uh, my OC Nami and I've had her for probably 10 years and it, she's actually how Kat and I first met. We met on Tagaki and her character Array. Um, she created her and I had Nami and they were friends and it was like the most wonderful time. I just I loved our painting with her. It was so much fun. As you can see the picture on the left is what she originally looked like. Nami has come so far and to see her drawn in cat style it's just she's so gorgeous and this this is really exciting for me to color. I, I don't think I've done coloring of someone else's line art since like DeviantArt days. Oof. Rough. But yeah, back in like, I want to say that was like 2008, 2009, we created these characters, we had these stories with them, and it's just amazing to see how much they've changed and how much different, like how different we drew them, you know? Like, Nami, as you saw, she was uh, pretty pretty sketchy. The, the website Tagaki was... Uh, I had a hard time with it. I was originally a mouse user rather than a tablet user, so it took a long time to kind of get into that groove of it. But I digress. We all change, right? We all come from somewhere. So the first thing about Kat's line art is she draws a lot more freely than I do. I have to have these like super crisp, almost like... They're almost static lines, like you, there's no movement to them, whereas Kat, she's able to get these wonderful gestures and movement in her art, which I really, really admire. But because she has such a different way of lining her pieces, I had to go about blocking in my colors a little different. Because <laughs> if I'm being honest, I, I rely pretty heavily on the bucket tool normally just to block in my flats, which I still did, but you know. As you can see on the right, that's how I draw Nami now. So she's come a long way from the picture that was before. And even even Kat, she draws her hair just so gorgeous. Ugh, I love it so much. So, but yeah, in order to kind of keep the integrity of the lines, I set it as a multiply layer and I blocked in all my flats the best I could. Unfortunately, I, um, I had messed up earlier with the skin, so I had to redo all the skin. For colors, I Nami, I always put her in blues. She was a water elementalist, and I always drew her in blue just to kind of go with the theme of that, and it's it's never really gone away. I, I think the only other color I've really drawn her in is maybe pink, but she was in this comfy looking jacket, and it looked like, like maybe like a big cozy sweater, or maybe like a snowboarding jacket and I thought that would look good in some nice blues and whites so I was really excited for that because she actually has an outfit I used to draw that was blue and white stripes so it was nice to see the stripes again because it played into that for me and I think what was most fun about this for me wasn't even exactly coloring the picture but it was about going back and kinda looking at these old RPs we used to do and seeing the characters and how they've changed so much and just how we we as people developed and how the characters developed and it's just it's such a happy reminder to me because the times on Tagaki meant so much to me and meeting Kat was just an incredible experience and I've always admired her and her work and to see how far she's come it's just it fills me with joy and I'm just so excited to see how far she's come because her, like, when I first met her, I was stunned by her art, and I'm still stunned by her art, because she's just incredible. 
the, the movement she can get, the, the way she colors things, and just the, the designs of her character, I just, I love it all. So this was really, really fun for me to do and participate with, and I'm so glad she asked. It's funny, thinking back to Nami when I first created her, uh, she was supposed to be this tough girl and like, you know, cool kid on the block sort of thing, and she ended up being this big crybaby, and I think that was just kind of like my younger self using Nami as a way to kind of express how I was, how I was feeling and kind of just be more free about it, and I think that's what I like about her so much is that she was an outlet when I, when I needed something, if I if I wanted to draw, I could always draw her. If I wanted to kind of get feelings out there, I utilized them in my art, in those RPs, and in all the pictures I drew with it. So Nami has a very special place in my heart. And those times I, I cherish so much because I don't know where my art would have gone if I hadn't been on Togaki. It's unfortunate because it had shut down for a while. And I'm not sure if that was lack of funding or lack of user base, but it recently came back and it's it's slow, but it's like, you know, it's gradual to come back. And that really, really excited me to kind of bring back these characters that I had almost not forgotten, but tucked away, you know, in the memory and never used again. And it's not to say that I'm going to like actively start using her again, but it's just nice to know she's there. Because it's it's from a time that I I really really needed you know Tagaki and all those RPs and my friendship with Kat just it really meant a lot to me when I was in high school because I think it created these characters in like grade eight maybe no grade nine probably somewhere around there so anyway to the art <laughs> So what I do for my coloring, I block in my flats as I said, and I go over top with overlay layers. So what overlay layers do is, it you pick a color, I usually go to purple, like a lot of shades of purple, because as you can see on the brown it looks really nice, and overlay puts that color on top, and a lot of the times it looks absolutely atrocious. So if you try overlay layers and you're like, that doesn't look right, that doesn't look like what you did, you're right, it probably doesn't because you need to change the opacity because that is huge. Um, otherwise it just turns out to be like this dark colored purple blob and it looks terrible. But like even with the, the purple on the blue and on the brown and those jeans, oh my god, I was so happy with just how this purple turned out. It just looked amazing. And even on the face, I think I used some shade of purple. And to darken it, I wanted to keep it soft. It's I've always liked to keep my art soft. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I took another uh, overlay layer and did a, um, darker colors and then blended it out so that way it was kind of like a, a soft transition of gradients to kind of give that subtle dark color without being too overbearing because I'll be real with you, I'm not super great at true cell shading because I have a hard time with shadows. I tried to kind of keep all the shadows where they should be. I wanted the light source to be kind of like from the right going down towards her, so, or from the side towards her, I'm not really sure. I didn't have an idea like where she was in this, but I took the reference of the lines underneath her chin as um, like hatch marks as to where the shading should come from, and I kind of ran with it from there. But all in all, this this coloring, I was I was so happy with it. It's been so long since I did digital media. I got kind of involved in traditional for so long, so this is kind of not to have to worry about the drawing itself was quite relaxing, so yeah, sure, like I had to draw my own picture. But I had done that before and it wasn't you know, it wasn't a big deal, but oh, see? Overlay. If you have it at full opacity, it looks terrible. I think I learned this technique on Tumblr somewhere. I don't remember. But it's it's really worked well for me and it just it looks so soft and it just I, I love that I kind of wish I could could like maybe made it a little darker but I tend to stay towards pastels I really like soft colors it just it's pleasing to the eye for me and people who can use those bright colors oh my goodness good for you 
I wish I could do that. <laughs> all in all, all I can say is really that I'm just, I'm so happy with this, uh, the way I colored it, and it just, it turned out so much more better, so much more better, so much better than I expected. And I'm really excited for you guys to see how Kat colored my picture, because I just, her style is so beautiful, and her painted pictures just look stunning, so I know she'll make it look amazing. I, I hope I did this justice. I really tried really hard with this, and I, it's not that I stressed about it, I just, I had fun with it. I just, I really wanted it to look good, because it, well, it, I don't know. You never want, like, something you make, uh, you do with someone to look bad, right? So. With the, with the light colors here, I'm just doing a, a screen overlay in case you guys are wondering. Be careful with that because it will, as well, much like the overlay, it does overpower, so you'll really have to fiddle with the opacities there. Like, I'm, when I do the skin overlays, it just, uh, yeah, it, it came out basically white. And Nami's already pale, but, you know. It's funny, actually, um, with Nami, I remember... I was so afraid that I was going to make her overpowered for like the longest time. So I had like so many of her abilities like locked down like she could only control water. She couldn't control ice or she couldn't control a lot of water or else it would physically harm her and I, I don't know why I limited myself like that. I It wasn't until I watched Avatar The Last, Emb uh, the Last Airbender that I actually started to branch off with that and you know kind of make it work. So yeah. <laughs> Young me was uh, not super great at writing, but I'm glad I'm glad that everybody had fun when we did RP, you know. And I'm glad that Cat was able to tolerate my uh, cringiness. Oh boy, because uh, Nami was just just a train wreck. But that's the important thing. Like you know, treasure who you have and. With your characters, yeah, when you first cram, they may not be great, but as long as you and whoever you're RPing with is having fun, I think that's what's important and a lot of people seem to forget that. You want to make a cringy character? By all means. Who cares? At the end of the day, it's for you. It's not for anybody else. And you never know. You might get some amazing friendships out of it like I did. Like, I don't think I would have strived as hard for art for a long time. If I hadn't met Kat, because I always, I always wanted to make her proud, and I always wanted my art to look really good, and because I, I, like I said, I looked up to her a lot, so it, it strived, uh, it helped me strive to be better, and like I, I got, I got work to do, everybody does, but it's, it gave me something, it gave a spark to me that I never really lost, and I'm always thankful for. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting a little mushy here. Anyway, so for the the background, I you know what? I suck at backgrounds. I hate doing backgrounds. So I just wanted to block in some shapes, block in some color, kind of make it look like it was a, a skyline or something like that. Kind of, or a city line, sorry, not a skyline. Kind of keep it simple, but something that didn't pull away from it. So I kind of kept it a flat color. It's some sort of yellowish color and it seemed to work for it so that's all that matters because I know I I couldn't use another blue because that would look weird I couldn't use purple and green seemed too bright so I kind of maybe it's like sunset or something like that and that's why everything in the background would be yellow I don't know but I think it looked nice I like geometric shape style stuff in the background I think it just looks really nice and it I'll be honest with you it's a really easy way to do a background it looks like you uh, put more effort into it than you probably did. Especially like that, that fence I got behind her. It it really helped add something to it without taking away from her. So, that, ooh. Yeah, some of those colors that I did on that saturation just did not look good. I couldn't, nothing else looked good but yellow. Probably because she was blue. So, that's probably why I stuck to yellow. But anyway. I hope you guys have a wonderful new year in case I don't get another video out before the end of the year. And, you know, happy holidays, whatever you choose to celebrate. I hope you guys have an amazing time. 
and I, got, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'm hoping to have more videos on a more consistent schedule in the new year. So yeah, thanks so much for all your support and I look forward to sharing my new videos with you guys in the new year, unless maybe I get one before New Year's, we'll see. I'm not going to promise anything. But yeah, thanks so much for all your support. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye!